I really love that intro. Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome back to another Craig and Dave Unscripted. So you've been indulging us for the last sort of six or so weeks, trips down memory lanes, talking about how we got into teaching. But uh, we always intend to do more of this series, as we alluded to. So uh, one of the things we want to do is bring on guest speakers, and we're hoping to have our first uh, guest speaker appearing next week. Um, but we also want to do videos for people who aren't just currently active students at GCSE or A-level or current teachers, but also those of us that have, have left us. Um, you know, we know many of you are at a university or, you know, even even beyond. And for some reason, which we can't figure out, you're still, still subscribe to us. You know, we'd like to be able to make content for a wider audience. So I guess this is our first um I thought it was going to experiment with, with Medio for a slightly wider audience. So what topic, Dave, have we picked for the wider well, audience? Well, of course, we'll have to pick the most exciting topic of them all in computer science. We will. It's algorithms. No. <laughs> what, what are we doing? That's algorithms. how to engage the audience. There you go. Algorithms. Al Algorithms, fantastic. We know it's one of the hardest areas of the specification. People struggle, which is why there's an excellent book available on Amazon by Craig and Dave, Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science. <laughs> Never heard of them, wouldn't recommend. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Glossy cover, look at that. Anyway, um, a pl plug of our book done. Um, so we're going to focus specifically um, today because there are so many algorithms, just on sorting algorithms. So obviously you learn about searching algorithms and A-level pathfinding algorithms, but let's just focus on sorting. So what we've got on the screen there is a list of the various sorting algorithms that you're required to learn about at GCSE or A-level for, you know, several of the major exam boards in, in England. So typically, you know, you, we all learn about the bubble sort and merge sort straight away. And then at A-level, we tend to pick up a, a, a couple more, depending on your exam board. So, you know, most of you will be quite familiar with those. You, you, you've studied them, you, you know the advantages and which ones are more efficient than others. And, uh, you know, you get to A-level and you've got your list there of algorithms. So they are the four sorting algorithms. Yes, Dave? Don't know of any others. Other than? <laughs> <laughs> other than all these. So, look, yeah, just in the field of sorting algorithms, there are so many. That list there was a 30, 60 second search on Google. There's the four in blue, which are covered by the full A level. And, you know, there's another 16. And, you know, I, I recognize a few off that list. You know, I've, I I know what the cocktail sort is. I know what the comb sort is. I've heard of the heap sort. The rest, never even heard of them. What's what's a pigeonhole sort? No idea. And, and that Python and that list. Python oh, you know me, Dave. Well, Python uses the Tim sort, by the way. Just so Does just it? so people know. Yeah, if when you say dot sort in Python, it uses a Tim sort. Right. Well, there you go. Learn something every day. Every day's a school day. And that obviously is not a complete list. I mean, there are literally hundreds of algorithms out there and um you know some of them are quite daft and that brings us to the focus of why we're chatting about algorithms so can you think of any other um particular sorting algorithms dave that that, that, that you know about that maybe aren't even on that list I think so. I think I'm going to introduce you to a couple of my favorites. Okay. So here is the Bozo sort. All right. So let me talk you through what the code is, is doing first, and we'll give it a run and we'll, we'll see, see what happens. So the first thing is that I've got a function here called is sorted. And its purpose is just to tell me whether a list of numbers is sorted or not. So I know whether to continue the algorithm or whether I can stop it. Here is the uh, list of numbers that we're going to be using, 463218. And here is where all the magic happens. So I've got a function called bozo sort that performs the actual sort, okay? Now, what it does is it picks two of those numbers in the list at random, okay? So we've got a couple of lines of code in here that are picking uh, a random item from that list. And then it simply swaps them. It picks two numbers from the list, it swaps them, and it says, okay, is the list Why? now sorted? And it goes and checks it. And that's what a bozo sort actually does. The question is, does it work? Okay, so 
let's give it a run and find out. So we'll give him a run. Oh, there we go. Look, it was pretty quick, wasn't it? Pretty efficient here. 1,333 passes to sort a list of six items. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so the Bozo saw uh, it, it works, but should you be using it? No. But if your teacher tells you that the bubble sort is the most inefficient uh, sort, <laughs> then, uh, oh, no, 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 no. There are sorting algorithms that are far worse than the bubble sort. Let's give it another run because uh, it's using random numbers. So we, we don't know whether that was a good run or a bad run. Let's give it another one. Oh, only 902. OK, let's give it another one. Oh, 1046. So what's interesting about this algorithm is that even though I haven't changed the numbers that it's trying to sort, it actually takes a variable amount of time to do it because of the random nature, which is which is quite interesting. Let's add a couple of extra numbers. Yeah, I was just going to say, because of this random nature, I mean, this is a small data set, but as soon as you make this data set any decent length at all, this is just going to run forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've added some six, extra six to nine items. Okay, six to nine items. Okay, oh, thinking about it. Oh, there we go. Look, 300,000 passes, <laughs> <laughs> almost 300,000 passes. Yeah, so not, not very efficient, but it works, right? It is a sort, you can't deny it. It is a sorting algorithm, it does yeah. what it says on the tin. Interesting. I... Do you know of any others, Dave? Well, you see, not wanting to be outdone by the bozo sort, let me introduce you to the bogo sort. <laughs> oh, naturally. So the bogo sort um, is, you know, even more inefficient than the bozo sort, really. Uh, what it does is it takes our numbers. So here's our, our list of numbers again, as, as we had before. I've still got the function that checks whether the list is sorted or not. So that hasn't changed. But now I've got a function called the BOGO sort. And what it does is instead of picking two items to, to randomize, it takes the whole list and just re-randomizes it to see if by chance it had come up with the list in the right order. So let's give this a run and see what uh, see what happens. Uh, ooh, how wow. about that? 94 passes. That, that feels relatively efficient. <laughs> I mean, not compared to even a bubble sort, but it, it, so that's slightly surprising. Let's give it another run. Oh, 284. 64. 966. <laughs> <laughs> so just... If you want to guarantee that your sort is performed within a certain amount of time, I, I, I don't think you're going to be using the BOGO sort or the BOZO sort anytime soon. Let's, in, let's introduce a few extra, extra numbers like we did last time. Uh, same numbers. And uh, let's give it another run and see what the BOGO sort can come up with here. Ooh, 127,581 passes. Doesn't seem too bad to me, but again. <laughs> Oh, 112,000. Now, of course, I'm running this on a relatively modern uh, PC. I say relatively modern. My PC is about three years old, actually. But if this was running on an on an old uh, computer, then, uh, my goodness, you wouldn't want it to be 384,579 passes. <laughs> That's that seems right. ridiculous. But before we go on, Craig, I've forgotten one thing about my little bozo sort. We we'll very on. quickly return to that because we we do, we want this to be as inefficient as possible. So one thing that you might notice is when it picks the two random numbers, it doesn't care if it picked the same number. So if it picks element three um, twice, it, it'll just swap itself. It, it it doesn't care about that. So inefficiency is the order of the day, right? So. You have shown us two completely pointless algorithms, well, which not do pointless. okay, okay, they fine. work. Okay, okay. Don't don't write about these algorithms in your exam, please. <laughs> um, you've shown us two highly inefficient algorithms, which one could argue are relatively pointless when we have other much more efficient ones. But why, Dave? Why are you doing this? What is the point of this video? Have we lost the plot? 
Well, possibly yes. But the reason Dave has shown you these bizarre algorithms is because, here we go, drum roll, yeah. we are introducing you to the Craig and Dave Ministry of Silly Algorithms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, now, right, okay. This is your chance to join this exclusive ministry and possibly win yourself an official member of the Ministry of Silly Algorithms mug. It has a copy of the BOGO sort printed on it in Python and has the title Big O No, which I just think is hilarious. If you're a GCSE student, you might not get that reference. If you're an A-level student, you probably will. And you probably still don't think it's very funny. <laughs> we think it's hilarious. Now, I should point out, you cannot buy this mug on our merchandise store, can you, Dave? No, it is not for sale. It is not for sale. You can only get it by becoming part of the Ministry of Silly Algorithms. So how do you become part of the Ministry of Silly Algorithms, I hear you saying? Stop waffling on, Craig and Dave. Well, tough. We're going to waffle on for another 30, 40 seconds before we tell you. <laughs> because Dave's going to give you a prime example now of the sort of algorithm that we would like to see from you to become part of the Ministry of Silly Algorithms here at Craig and Dave. So go on, Dave, back over to you. Absolutely. A little bit longer than 30 seconds, I'm yeah, afraid. I know. <laughs> but this is my Morecambe and Wise date programme. And uh, teachers might have a smile here. And students, you'll just have to Google Morecambe and Wise and <laughs> work it out from there. Um, OK, so what this does is it takes the date. And so we're recording this on the 17th of May 2021. So the digits are 170521 for the date. And my algorithm has all the right digits of the date, but not necessarily in the right order. So let's give it a run and see what happens. Ah, it returned 172501. Not even the date is valid. But that doesn't matter. It's a perfect entry for the Ministry of Silly Algorithms. It executes, it runs, it provides an output, and there you go. It is completely pointless. It's a working algorithm. That That's what's important. Right. Okay, then. So... Yeah. And... Yeah, and worth a mention, of course, there are no comments. Of oh, course, yeah. there are no subroutines. No. Of course, there are not sensible identifiers because <laughs> any self-respecting algorithm for the Ministry of Silly Algorithms can't possibly be readable. <laughs> That's actually fairly readable in fairness. You can, I yeah. know. <laughs> well, I didn't want to completely confuse the audience, but... Yeah, okay, I could do better. Right, so by the sounds of it then, Dave, we are after people writing us and submitting some silly algorithms. But what, what are the, um, before we get on to how you actually submit this, you know, mm. what, what are the parameters here? I mean, you know, what, what, yeah. what are the ground rules? Yeah, so it must be written in Python 3. And yeah. we're doing that just so that we've got a level playing field, GCSE and A-level. Most students at GCSE are going to recognize Python 3 code, okay? So it's got to be in Python 3. So it's got to be a .py file. It's got to be relatively short. Now, we're not going to give you a, a line count, but it has to be relatively short. It has to actually execute without any yeah. bugs, and it has to produce an output. And you have to be able to describe what that output is. So for example, with the Morecambe and Wise date program, it's all the right digits of the date, not necessarily in the right order. So we'd like you to describe the algorithm, present it to us in, in Python, and beyond that, it's up to you. Yeah, so this is what it comes down to then. Um, entries. So, you know, if you've, if you've written yourself a silly algorithm that you're, you're proud of, say, in Python 3, and you can describe to us what it does, and it works, then we'd like you to email us the .py file. And there's the email address at the bottom. Now, as a bare minimum, obviously, if you want to be entered, we need you just to email your .py file. And, and you can leave it at that. 
Obviously, if you want to be in a chance of um, actually winning one of the mugs, we will also need your name and address so we can post it to you. Uh, we won't share that with anybody else. And, you know, if you happen to be a young, enthusiastic coder and you're under the age of 13, please get permission to email us in the first place. But that's purely so that we can send you a mug. That is the only reason. Uh, in future videos, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get some very interesting versions we would love to share some of these algorithms on screen. And, uh, you know, if you would like to appear in one of the future videos uh, to be recognized, then we need a still photo. Uh, and, and again, obviously, that comes with your permission to use that photo to say, you know, here's Josh and here's his algorithm and, you know, he's won a mug. But you don't have to. Obviously, that's absolutely fine. There's no requirement there, uh, no expectation. Um, anything else you uh, <laughs> want to add, Dave? Yeah, well, who's this open to? So it's open to uh, anybody of any age. You can be a student, you can be a teacher, you can be anybody you like. If you are a professor of computer science at Oxford University and you would like to join Craig and Dave's Ministry of Silly Algorithms, then it's open to you as well. And as Craig says, those mugs will never be available um, on our store. The only way that you can get the mug is by submitting a .py file to us. The terms and conditions are quite simple. If we look at it, we like it, and it makes us laugh, then you're in a good chance of getting a mug. <laughs> Fantastic. This, I, I hope this company doesn't go bust on sending out free mugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. we won't send a mug necessarily to every algorithm we no. receive. It has to stand out and, and make us uh, make us chuckle. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, there you go. There's something a bit different from us. I uh, hope you like it, everyone. Uh, we'll leave it there for today, I think. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Cheers, Join everyone. the ministry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.